So I've gathered a lot of information on this, and this is what I'll say. I want to preface it with this. Best practices, I don't know if there's any concrete evidence to any of what I'm going to say today. A lot of this is just based on experience, it's based on results, and it's based on intuition. Podcast Growth Nation, welcome back to another episode of Podcast Growth University, where we talk all things podcasting all the time. I hope you enjoyed the latest episode. I believe, I think I said the right number. It's episode number 55. Is your mindset holding you back? I don't know. I might have said 56. I might have said 54. For some reason, I could not number that day. Today, for episode number 56, intro, outro, and trailer mistakes. Again, maybe this should have been towards the beginning of the podcast journey, maybe episode one, two, three, four, five, something like that. But my hope is that this will just slowly become a Rolodex where you can kind of go through and based on where you are in your journey, the goals that you have, you'll find the episodes that resonate the most with you. So one of the many things I do with podcast coaching clients is we'll do the intro, the outro, and the trailer. So when somebody signs up with us, the first thing I do is say, okay, on our first call, let's discuss intro, let's discuss outro, and let's discuss trailer. What they should be, how we want them to flow, the music, the goal of all these things, right? That That is what I want to accomplish on the first call, usually with a client who does not have a podcast yet. And I've seen some common mistakes with many of the shows that I have gone on as a guest because I'll usually listen through and try to get an idea of who the person is, what the show is going to be about, and that usually starts with me listening to the intro. So I've gathered a lot of information on this, and this is what I'll say. I want to preface it with this. Best practices, I don't know if there's any concrete evidence to any of what I'm going to say today. A lot of this is just based on experience, it's based on results, and it's based on intuition. So I want to preface that because there isn't really a lot of data to figure out what the best intro, what the best outro, and what the best trailer are. This is just from my experience and the experience of clients. So let's just start. Let's just get started. Okay, intro. And let's just do this. Maybe you don't even know what an intro is yet, or an outro or a trailer. So let me just define those as well. An intro is the first piece of content that people are going to hear when they start listening to an episode. So it'll usually be 45 seconds, 30 to 45 seconds. It'll have some sort of music in the background. And the goal is to tell people who you are, what the podcast is about, what problem does it solve, who does the show solve the the problem for, and how often do you drop episodes, right? So I don't remember what the intro for this is off the top of my head because I recorded it 57, 56 episodes ago, but it really should be something along the lines of, hey, welcome to Podcast Growth University. I'm your host, Kevin Palmieri. Over the last six years and 2,000 episodes, I've learned a lot about podcasting. Whether you want to grow, scale, monetize your podcast or anything in between, we will be doing an episode every single week on the ins and outs of podcasting. Whether you're a seasoned podcaster or somebody who is just starting, make sure you check it out because class is in session, just as an example. So you can tell in that intro, I'm introducing who I am. I'm adding a little bit of credibility to why you should listen to this podcast. I'm telling you who it's for, what you're going to get. That really is the goal of an intro. So imagine this. You have no idea the podcast you're about to listen to, and you just click on an episode. You want a little bit of music to play. You want the intro to happen, and then you get into the episode. Okay, that's the thought process. The outro is the last thing you hear. So after the episode is wrapped up, usually it'll cut to maybe a little bit of music and then they'll say, hey, thank you so much for listening to today's episode. And then they go from there and we'll, we'll get into that. And then the trailer, very similar to a movie. The trailer is a short episode that is going to describe in further detail what the podcast is about. Okay. That's that's what the trailer is. And depending on your platform, when you record the trailer, you can label it as a trailer episode and it'll remain in the top five on Apple. So it won't be in the top five, but when you scroll under the top five, it'll say trailer and it'll remain there forever. This is usually the first episode people are going to check out. So that's the high level of what these things are. Excuse me. Okay. Common mistakes for intros. One, the intro is either non-existent or too short. So when I say non-existent, some people don't even have trailers. 
There is no, tr uh, sorry, intro. Intro. Usually it's too short or non-existent. Some people don't even have intros where it just goes right into the episode. You're not priming the listener for what could actually happen in the episode. It's, it's just a cold open. It's just too cold. We're not warming up the listener to what they're actually going to get. That's one common mistake. The, the, one of the biggest mistakes I, I've seen is the first intro you record is the intro you use forever. And usually people don't think about that because yeah, you can get a new microphone for your episodes or you record in a different platform on your video and you have better audio. But many people don't think, oh, I should really record my intro again. A lot of people have old, old, old intros that just have terrible audio quality. The other thing that I've seen is a lot of people like to write out their intro. So they, they almost want to have all the words written out and then they'll read it from there. A lot of people are going to be able to tell that you're reading it and it might not sound super smooth. So I would suggest memorizing it and or doing bullet points where you're going through what you're going to talk about. If it's, if it's written out too much, it sounds too robotic and people are going to be turned off by that. Another common thing I see is no music. You don't have to have music, but I think having music behind it, number one, sets the mood, creates the vibe and helps expectations. And I also think it just sounds more professional. By definition, the stuff that is harder to do or harder to accomplish is usually valued more highly. So creating an intro can be a challenge if you're layering music in. So by definition, you having one is probably going to be valuable. I think it's it's a valuable thing to have and it helps set the, the mood and the vibe. Another common thing I've seen, and I don't have anything written down because I really just want to like go through it in my mind live and, and share it with you. Another thing I've seen a lot is people selling in their intro. So what does that mean? At the end of the intro, they might say, make sure you check out www.blahblahblah.com. Or if you're interested in our mastermind thing, make sure you go to our website. I never suggest selling in an intro or having a call to action. I, I won't even say selling, just having a call to action. There's a reason you tip after you, your meal. You don't tip before you eat, you tip after. There's a reason because you don't want to say, well, I'm going to give this person something before they add any value. It's the way it works, right? That's just tends to be how it works. I think the podcast is the same thing. So don't go into it with an intro that has a call to action saying, hey, make sure you do this, make sure you do that, make sure you do this. That usually doesn't work that well. I think a good intro is credibility. We solve this problem for this person in this way this many times a week. I really think that's the simplest thing to do for an intro. Now, there's a lot of different things you can do. You can go into your story, you can do all that, but 30 to 45 seconds, in and out, high quality audio, good music, and you're, you're off to the races. And that would be another mistake that I've seen is I think many people just have intros that are way too long. I mean, we're talking, I've seen a minute 45, two minute, too long. People are going to skip through those. Now, are people going to skip through your intro eventually anyway? Most likely. Yeah. But I am always optimizing for, but what about the time that it's their first what about the first time that they're coming across this episode? Somebody might listen to a minute and 30 and say, okay, I can't believe this intro isn't done yet. And they might leave. They might say, well, this isn't for me. And if you lose that person, they may never come back again. So 30 to 45 seconds, I think is the sweet spot for an intro. And you can, again, go through what you're going to say, bullet point it, test out a couple different reads and see what flows the best for you. But those are the most common mistakes that I see. It's too long usually, the audio quality is old, and you can tell they haven't upgraded it in a while. It doesn't tell you enough about the show. It doesn't tell you who the host is. It doesn't tell you who it's for. You don't know, you can't self-identify as this is the type of podcast I would consume. So if you stay within those parameters, you'll probably be pretty good. And just don't sound too robotic. Test it out a couple times. If you can edit it nicely in post-production, you can do that. But I've found that Bullet points and memorization is far better than reading it, unless you're really good at reading while you're recording audio, which is a challenge. And then this last one, I don't know. This one's a controversial one, probably. I like 
the host to read their own intro. So one of my clients hired me to, to do their intro. And I said, I'm happy to do it, but I would suggest that you do it because I want the audience to know who they're listening to and they're not listening to me. They're going to be listening to you. That's my take. I know people like to hire a voice actor or somebody who has a very unique voice or a high level of energy. Totally up to you. I would probably save your money, honestly, because it's your show. It's your brand. I can't imagine somebody doing your intro better than you from the heart. You know, maybe their delivery is better, their voice is different, whatever it may be. At the end of the day, that's not really going to make or break your show. People are tuning in for you, not your intro, right? The, the intro is a value add. We want the, the intro to be good. People aren't going to come back because of the intro necessarily. They might not stay because of the intro, but it's most likely not going to attract them back. So that's the most common thing with the intro. Absolutely, 100%. Hi, my name's John Larito, and I just wanted to uh, give a big shout out to Kevin Palmieri. I had uh, reached out to him. He had been referred to me when I had shared with a friend of mine some interest in uh, doing a podcast. And he said, you've got to use Kevin. He's fantastic. He's the best around. He'll get you started and off the ground and and uh, soaring high in no time. And take it from somebody who knows nothing about podcasting other than maybe saying a few things. But as far as behind the scenes, the startup everything I knew nothing. Uh, Kevin was phenomenal in terms of leading me through the whole process and not just easy to work with, but really, really knows his stuff. A great combination between leading me through all the stuff I had no idea what I was doing, but also really listening to me and understanding what it was I was trying to accomplish and what my vision is. So whether you're looking for somebody to, to help you and get you started or somebody as I've done, where I'm putting it entirely in his hands because I've got total trust and confidence in him, and he is a true pro and easy to work with. Any of those ends of the spectrum, you're going to have a lot of success and a lot of fun working with Kevin. Trust me. Thanks. And then they say, well, since it's in the outro, I don't have to plug it. I just think you'd be better off plugging it live because you're going to actually be able to put some emotion in. You'll easily be able to connect it to what you're talking about in the episode. So if, say, you have a, a podcast about relationships... If the episode we did today on communication broke something free for you and, and you found a lot of value, make sure you click the link in the show notes for, boom, there you go, for the next relationship masterclass versus just some canned outro where it says, hey, if you love our podcast, you'd also love our membership program. For information, click the link in the show notes. I just think you'd be better off with a a live read of the value and then the outro just being follow us on social share with a friend, subscribe, even though subscribe is a pretty valuable one because that affects the algorithm and the podcast rankings. So that's what I would say for outro. Outros are pretty simple because you've already delivered the value and then the question now is where do people go? But you're also going to get the opportunity to, to do a live read, especially if you're doing solos for where do people go? So I would probably leverage it that way. Trailer mistakes. Okay, the biggest trailer mistake I see, and I see it very, 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 very often, is the trailer isn't long enough. Now, different platforms have different stats and different information, but let's just say for the sake of argument, somebody must listen to at least one minute of an episode for it to count as a listen. Let's just say, because there are some platforms that say that. I believe Spotify says it's a minute. Other things say they're a second. Some places say they're 30 seconds. The podcast industry is very much all over the place with that. But let's just say for the sake of argument, it's a minute. If your trailer is 47 seconds long, you're not going to get any downloads from it. Now, again, if your trailer is 49 seconds long and you're getting downloads, obviously the place where you're getting those downloads from counts less than a minute as a download, but you might be missing places. So even if nine out of 10 places say 47 seconds is, is a listen, but there's one place that says it has to be over 60 seconds, you're missing out on potential data. That is the most common mistake I've seen with the trailer is it's not long enough to get measured. Other part is it's too long. So again, is there anything concrete behind what I'm saying other than experience and just studying it no not really but imagine if a imagine if you were watching tv 
and a trailer for Titanic came on and it was 17 minutes long versus two minutes or three minutes. You might not stay for the whole thing. Now, a good trailer is going to help somebody self-identify as I'm the type of person who would listen to this. So it does accomplish that goal. But I want somebody to actually consume the trailer and say, I want more, not consume the trailer and say, I would like less. So I've seen trailers that are just full episodes, you know, a 45 minute episode. I don't think that's it. I would do a two to, th I, I usually say two to five, two to five minute episode that is a solo episode. And it explains in depth why you started this podcast and what you're going to learn. I, that's my thought because if somebody tunes into your trailer as the first listen, which is most likely going to happen, the data I have on shows, a lot of the highest listen to episodes are the trailer and the first episode because a lot of people go back to listen, right? So if they go and listen to the trailer and they see it's only four minutes, they might say, oh yeah, no, I can definitely listen to that versus 45 minutes. They, oh, maybe I'll come back to that. YouTube videos are the same. If you see a video that's four minutes and you only have 10 minutes, you might listen or you might watch it. If it's 26 minutes and you only have eight minutes, you're not going to watch it. That's my thought with the trailer. The trailer isn't necessarily something that is focused on being super valuable. It's focused on helping your listener self-identifies this is the type of podcast for me and I want to come back another common mistake with trailers is again lack of trailer completely just not ideal I would say you're missing out on opportunities not a good call to action so at the end of the trailer you can always say hey if you resonated with what I talked about today make sure you check out episode number two or one, depending on how you have it labeled, where I interviewed blank or where I talked to blank, right? The, the why, what, where, why are people here? What do they expect? Where do they go next? If you can use your trailer to get somebody to go to the first full episode, it's doing its job. Where, where do people go next? Some people don't have that in there. And then this is a big one too. And we're, we're guilty of this at NLU. So right now I'm saying, do as I say, not as I do. But being afraid to re-record your trailer, a lot changes over 50 episodes, right? A lot can change in terms of, oh, I'm not doing guest interviews anymore. Oh, I'm talking less about this and more about this. The trailer can always change. It can always change the trailer. And you can just go in and change the audio file. You don't have to lose the downloads. You don't have to do any of that. It's worth trying. It's worth doing. It's worth keeping things up to date because as a podcaster, you're changing. Your podcast is changing. You're getting better. Your ability to speak into the microphone is more powerful. Your pauses are better. You're more capable of recording a great trailer episode. Now, here's the other thing. Say you're doing interviews. When you first have your podcast and you have zero episodes and you're recording your trailer, you don't really know who you're going to interview. But if you want, you can go back and record the trailer 50 episodes in. You can say on this podcast, you're going to learn blah, 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 blah. This is why I started the podcast. I've been blessed enough to have guests like blank, 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 blank on the show. So make sure you listen to episode one where I interviewed blah. It's, it's just more powerful. It suggests that, oh, okay, this person really has their stuff together. Look at the people they've interviewed. Awesome. You can't really do that in the beginning because you don't know who you're going to interview necessarily. So that's another mistake. And that's for all of these. That's for the intro. That's for the outro. That's for the trailer is not thinking you can go back and change it. You can always change it. You can add different music. You can add, try different stuff. You can change the brand of your podcast completely and change everything. Don't be afraid to change it because these things are not concrete. And it's not the end of the world. Truthfully, it's not. We've changed our intro and outro many times. We're in the process right now of recording a new trailer and we need to do that. That'll happen here with Podcast Growth U. It's okay. It's If it's going to make the show better, it's probably the right thing. So those are the things that I've seen the most. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I would say off the top of my head. Pick a good song. Don't, don't steal a song. Download a song legally because you can get in trouble for having copyrighted material. So do that. Just make sure the audio quality is as good as possible. 
again, your intro and your outro are going to be heard every single time somebody listens to the episode. Now, they might not listen, but I'm just saying it's it's something that's going to get recorded once and used forever. And you got to make sure it's as high of quality as humanly possible. So if you get a new microphone, record a new intro, outro, and trailer. If you get a new software you're using, intro, outro, trailer. If you feel like you've become a much better speaker and the first draft is, is something that's choppy, intro, outro, trailer. Take the time to do this because this is the packaging. And fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you want to look at it, the packaging matters as much as everything else. So that would that is what I would say. Intro, outro, and trailer mistakes, those are the most common ones. And that's what I would focus on. 30 to 45 seconds intro, 30 to 45 seconds outro, even 30 seconds on an outro is good. Trailer, I like three to five minutes. I think it's a good sweet spot. I don't think it's very intimidating for a listen and it'll count as a download on all the platforms so you don't have to worry about potentially missing things. Pick a good song that resonates with your audience and represents the brand well and what they're going to learn and I think you're probably you're probably good there. Last thing I'll add before we go, I like to have a little bit of a catchphrase. So if you can come up with your own little catchphrase, that's something that you'll say in the podcast and in the business and in the brand. I like that. We say self-improvement in your pocket every day from anywhere completely free. That's one of our taglines and that's in our intro. So that's another thought is use it as an opportunity to brand yourself. Outro, same thing. You know, if you could find a way to say, uh, make sure you have a next level day or something like that, that would be another valuable thing. But again, you're always going to have the opportunity to improve these. In the beginning, it's just important to get it out. And right now, if you're listening and you say, oh, wow, I don't even have an intro. Cool. Just get one out. Doesn't have to be perfect. We can always fix it. I don't have an, I don't even have an outro. Cool. Take 10 minutes, figure out what the best verbiage would be, practice it, hit record trailer okay cool why did we start this what's it about what are you going to learn what are the specific topics we're going to cover who are some of the guests we're going to have what can you expect to leave here with why should you tune in right that that type of thing those are the those are the most common mistakes all right 23 minutes as always if you are interested in a free 30 minute podcast breakthrough session, I will have my link in the show notes below. I have been doing a ton of them. It has been amazing. Some are business owners that are fitness coaches that are looking to monetize. Other people are just trying to get started. Other people just have YouTube channels currently and they want to transition into a podcast. So it's been, it's been very, very wonderful. I had a podcast breakthrough session today with somebody who said, you know, I'm just not recording episodes because I don't know what to do with them after. It's like, ah, interesting. Okay. You're, you're kind of stuck in that place. No worries. This is what I would do. This is what I would do. Boom. So wherever you are in the podcast journey, I'm sure I can add some value to you. I do not have all the answers. I have some of them. And sometimes a conversation between two podcasters is a valuable use of your time anyway, even if you don't have any specific questions. So link will be in the show notes as always next week for episode number 57. Is good enough ever enough? I'm excited to talk about that because that's something we actually talked about on Next Level University recently, and I've been using this a lot with my clients. So make sure you tune in for that episode. As always, I appreciate you all very much. If you can't tell, I'm losing my voice because I've been doing many episodes lately, but we will power through. I'm grateful for you all. This at one point was all a dream, and I promise to never forget that. Keep on crushing it. Keep on podcasting, and I will talk to you all next week.